what is 7 times 7? What is it? Is that 49? Well, who would you learn math from? Because it's definitely not 49. Let me explain. To understand why 7 times 7 is not 49, you need to understand the idea of templates. So what exactly are templates? Templates in simple terms are basically dynamic parts of content. If there's a web page whose content is almost the same, but only certain parts of it change, then there's a good chance that they're using templates. Templates look something like this. They have a static part and a dynamic part. Dynamic ones are inside these squiggly brackets or flower brackets, and that's how compiler knows that that part is dynamic. Also, one other thing to note is that not all templates look exactly like this. This is just an example of a templating engine called Jinja, which is used by popular Python frameworks like Django and Flask. But just so you remember, this syntax might differ with other languages and other frameworks, but the general idea of templates remains same across the board. Now let's talk about the vulnerability. So what exactly are template injections? As the name suggests, it's a type of injection vulnerability that exists in web applications where the user's input gets mixed up with the template definition. For example, if user-controlled input, such as their bio information, for example, is displayed with this template, then it's totally safe because all we're doing is getting the current user's information from the database and sending it back to the user. But now consider this example. If the user's input becomes a part of the template, then we have a big problem because the templates have the ability to evaluate arbitrary code. So a user might be able to do some complex differential calculus like seven times seven, or even get a shell on the server. This vulnerability is often termed as server-side template injections, where a attacker can inject malicious template code to own the system. But one thing to note is that it's not just bound to server-side. The vulnerability can exist anywhere as long as templates are available. It's time for us to hack a very simple web application written in Python that uses Flask Web Framework. The reason that I'm choosing Python and Flask is because it's the most easiest example that I can come up with. The web application is vulnerable to server-side template injections and our goal is to get a shell on the server. First, let's actually try to confirm that the vulnerability actually exists. Here, the templates are represented by curly brackets. 668.5 times two, we click save, and there we go, we get 1337. Now that we know this is a server-side template injection and it evaluates our expressions, now let's go ahead and try to get a shell. We can simply do that by importing a module such as OS, which gives us operating system level APIs. And one of them is executing a shell command, which is exactly what we need. So let's go and call the system function and pass in the command that we want to execute. Now click save and what happened? It didn't work. Now why is that? The reason that happened is because Jinja, the templating engine, limits what you can do with templates, such as not supporting import statements. If we can't import anything, then the other way is to use whatever we have at our disposal. This is usually referred to as gadgets. In our case, gadgets are simply parts of code which we have access to, but also it helps us to get a shell. Enough of waiting. Let's see the payload, right? So here it is. Now I know at first glance it might look scary for some of y'all, but I promise it's gonna look a lot less intimidating in a minute. But remember, even though if you don't get what I'm about to say or explain, it's fine, it's totally fine. I've got an easy solution at the end, don't worry. What you're seeing here is basically 
finding a way to the OS module to get a shell. And this is the path that we take to reach the OS module. Simple as that. Now you might think, wait a minute, we haven't even imported the OS module yet. And we already know we can't import anything else. So good luck with getting a shell, I guess. Well, you're right with the first part, which is we can't import anything else within the templates, but Python comes at you like, surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that Python interpreter uses Python. Yes, you heard me right. Python uses Python internally. At this point, Python depends on certain modules like sys, which in turn includes the OS module. You see where I'm going with this? Basically, the OS module is right there, but you can't see it. Knowing this, all we have to do is to find a way to access that. And the way that we do that is by using gadgets. In Python, everything is an object, which means strings are an object, lists are an object, dictionaries are an object, you are an object, I am an object, Eminem is an object, everything is an object, all right? If strings are objects, then it should have a class and we should be able to get that by checking the property dunder class on any string you want. We can also get a hold of its base class by doing dunder base property. Now we're getting closer. Once we have that, we can list all the subclasses or other classes which inherit this base object class and we can pick the right one which has the system module in it. For example, the class warnings.catchwarnings. If you look at the source code on GitHub for this specific class, you'll see that it imports the sys module. All we have to do now is to reach to its globals and access sys.modules. This gives us a direct handle to the OS module. So putting it all together gives us this payload. Yes, it might take some time to craft this, but you can certainly build upon the ideas of existing research. To quickly summarize this whole thing, we get a handle to the base object class, then get all its subclasses, pick the one which has access to the sys module, and get a handle to the OS module, and finally execute our code using popen function. Let's give it a shot. There you go, works like a charm. Like I promised, there's an easy solution to do this. Do you see the URL for a function? Well, this is a very commonly used Flask function. You don't have to know the details, but all it does is generate some URLs for assets such as CSS files and a whole lot of other things. But for hackers, if you look at the file where the function exists and scroll all the way up, you see what? OS, of course, it's right there. Now, all you have to do is just call globals and use OS, simple as that. Either way, things work, but what you should take away from this whole thing is to use whatever's at your disposal to your advantage. Essentially, make use of gadgets. I know, it was a lot to take in just for an overview slash introduction to the vulnerability class but I hope this was a bit more insightful and interesting at the end, hopefully. This type of vulnerability isn't just bound to a specific framework like Flask or even a specific language like Python. This exists in a wide range of frameworks and languages altogether. So keep your eyes wide open. Lastly, remember, Never mix code and input together. Trust input as unsafe all the time, no matter what. Finally, 7 times 7 is what? That's right, it's server-side template injections. I'll see you in the next one.